It's your boy, the one and only nonprofit sector connector. Wow, that was an extra long pause from the kid today. I'm fired up, man. It is basketball month here on Philanthropy and Focus. I didn't know three weeks ago it was going to be basketball month, to be honest with you. I was at an event late December, not late December back in 63 like that song, although who knows? I might say late December back in 23. I was at an event, Springfield Gardens, Queens. Haran H2O Hargrave. I met him that day. I met my my new friend Zoe, CEO Zoe Lorenzo Hall, who's introducing me to my next new friend, Gary Forbes. I two weeks ago, Haran was on the show. Last week, my friend Chris Noel and my friend Ryan Martin. Ryan Martin from CUNY runs the adaptive sports program at CUNY, the City University in New York. Chris Noel with Parks Department. He's uh um runs the ADA functions over at the Parks Department. Also, he's the coach for New York City Rolling Fury. New York Rolling Fury, excuse me. I, I didn't know this was going to be basketball month. And I think next week we're going to be talking about pancakes. That's a whole different episode. Um, I think I'm going to be eating a lot of pancakes in the month of February. That's kind of a teaser. We're going to see how that goes. Um, and look, we're in basketball mode right now. My son playing CYO ball. He just finished his middle school season. My other son starts CYO, I think, started last Saturday. I missed the game. He's got a game tomorrow. Some of my daughters, one of my daughters is playing CYO ball. I used to play CYO ball until I got to Chaminade High School here in Long Island and realized my career had ended. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we all realize that at some point our career uh, may end and I, everybody's career ends at some point. I mean, it's just um, how far along did you get? But I, I'll tell you the truth, gang. I'm joining the JCC in my neighborhood over here in Nassau County and I'm going to start playing ball again. Um I'm I'm probably in the best shape of my life right now, man. I sort of have like the physical body of, if you remember the movie E.T., you remember he was like a skinny guy, skinny arms, skinny legs with a little belly. I kind of have the physique of, of the extraterrestrial. Thank you, everybody. I hope you got a laugh out of that one. A little bit of a chuckle. So it is basketball month. Didn't know it was going to be, but it is. So let's just get into it, man. What is philanthropy and focus? Every single Friday morning, I make the trek up from my kitchen, two flights up just below the roof of the house gang in my attic that's where i am this is right around i kind of lost count because i did some preliminary shows back in the day in in uh in 2020 and since we've been on talk radio down at nyc it's like episode 148 to 150 somewhere in that range i kind of lost count but the point of the matter is i remember watching sitcoms when i was a kid and if you got 100 episodes you were like syndicated and you were like they were going to put it on forever like the facts of life or or like different strokes and stuff like that so Hey, man, maybe they're going to syndicate the show. I am going to do 5,000 episodes of this show. And I only tell you that because, well, I tell you that because, look, it was an idea. I talked about this idea. I said, hey, man, I'm going to do this show. It's called Philanthropy and Focus. And then I spent 24 months walking around telling people that I was going to do a show. And then I finally did it. So my thing is don't waste the 24 months, gang. If you're going to do something, just friggin' do it. Try it out, man. Just Nike, right? Just do it. Try the thing out. I promise you this, something's going to happen. I'm not telling you it's going to be great. I'm not telling you it's going to be perfect. Well, I'm gonna, I'll tell you this, it ain't going to be perfect, but it's going to be something new. And you're going to have an opportunity to go back and look at it and review and see if that's what you want to do and try it again and measure and cut and measure and cut. Or you could just walk around talking about some stuff you're going to do and never do it. Life is freaking short, man. Get busy get busy doing something. I have to actually, I'm, I'm fumbling my phone because my day started like this this morning. I'm wearing, those of you who are, who are watching or found this somewhere on a streaming, I'm wearing this shirt from an organization that's very important to me, Options for Community Living here on Long Island. Options for Community Living and their leadership team, really, especially my friend Yolanda Rabano Gro. shout out to Yolanda and the team out there. They support individuals experiencing homelessness, living with HIV and AIDS, experiencing addiction issues, right? So we got to think about the nonprofits that we work with. Here's what I want. I reached into my drawer this morning and found this purple shirt. And I never wear long sleeve t-shirts. In fact, I hate long sleeve t-shirts because they bother me because they're never long enough. So I'm always messing with the sleeve. I don't <laughs> I don't know if this, some people are like, could you get into the show? Other people are like, I hate long sleeve t-shirts too, Tommy D. All right. So let me read. You can't see the back, but what it says on the back, it says resilience. And it's got this definition. It says resilience, parentheses, noun. And then it like breaks it out into resilience. And then it says the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, 
or significant resources of stress or excuse me, or significant sources of stress. It means bouncing back from difficult experiences. And I didn't realize the word bouncing was in there. And we're talking about ball today. So that's pretty funny. But bouncing back, gang, I, sh I took this picture of the shirt. I'm wearing the long sleeve T-shirt. And I sent this picture to my wife and my four kids in our little family text message because I said we need to find resilience. Life is challenging sometimes, man. You fall down. I was listening to Denzel had this speech. I think it was at the Ox uh, the uh, Oscars. Denzel, I say like he's my friend. Denzel Washington, you might have heard of him. He had a speech and it was just like, get knocked down seven times, get up eight. We've heard this stuff before. And we're going to talk, I think, these two men who are establishing their own careers and the work they're doing have gone through some adversity. And I actually, I don't even know them that well, but I'll tell you, everybody goes through adversity, gang. It's what are you going to do next, man? You know, what, what did Mike Tyson say? Um, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, life has a way about punching you in the face or maybe kicking you in the shins or giving you a little shove. But a lot of that, I think, is pushing you in a direction that you need to go to get better, get bigger, and make an impact. And I always say, like, when I see my kids, like, I don't coach the CYO team, but I love to, see, to watch them play ball. And I, I just say, get big, get big. I just like, get freaking, let's go. Like, just get as big as you can be and use whatever your body is and work it. All right, I'm going to stop there. I'm ranting. I'm raving. I'm extra fired up. I didn't even know how fired up I was. And I'm only, I know one of my guests is operating on a little bit of sleep, but I, I don't think I fell asleep till about 1.15 this morning. And it was get the four kids to school at 6.15 start. So let's just go. I got caffeine to go. I have two cups of coffee. I got another caffeine drink. Let's make it happen. The show is philanthropy and focus. I do two things. I help nonprofit leaders tell their story and amplify their message. And I said, I was at an event for Ballin' for Peace, Springfield Gardens High School, and I meet Zoe. And Zoe says to me, oh, Tommy, you got a show. I'd love to come on the show. We actually did a teaser video, him and I, which I don't even think we put out there yet. We'll put it out <laughs> after the show. But we did a video, and I was like, man, I'd love to interview you on my show. The thing is, my show is all about nonprofit organizations. So he goes, yo, all good, Tommy D. And I said, okay, go on. He said, well, then why don't we bring a friend and colleague of mine who I'm collaborating with who runs his own foundation? I said, we solved the problem. I said, so I got to check with my board of directors. I turned away for one second and said, we're good. I am the board of directors. I make the decisions because it's my show. All right. So CEO Zoe and Gary Forbes on Philanthropy and Focus. Good morning, gentlemen. What is up? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. We're excited, man. We appreciate the, you know, the opportunity. I loved your energy from the day we met. You know, and everything just made sense. I love what you're doing. You you remind me of myself with the being that 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 master connector. You That's know, it. as we spoke about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, it was great, man. Uh, you know, we looked forward to this right here. I'm glad we was able to make it work. And also, like I said, mentioning Gary, of course, who's another great person. You know, um, we would definitely wanted to make this happen. You know, it was a great opportunity. I'm glad you're here, Gary. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. I uh, appreciate you having us, man. Uh, definitely, definitely love the energy uh, early in the morning. Uh, <laughs> we're just, we're, we're going to have fun, man. We're just getting warmed up, brother. We're just getting warmed up. Like, like I mean, you're we're going to be on fire by 10.59 when this show's over, and we're going to have to come back and do three more shows in, in a couple of weeks, because I just, I don't know, we're going to run out of time, because I always run out of time. I'm like, look at it. I, I, I got to tell you this, man. I talked about the T-shirt. I love swag. I bought a, a, a hoodie at a, a nonprofit. I can't shout out everybody, but I bought a hoodie yesterday at a nonprofit, and I, I'm seeing swag. I'm seeing this Soul Survivors T-shirt that Gary Forbes got. I'm telling you, I don't know if there's a hoodie, but if there isn't, there should be. I would like to purchase a hoodie. You know, I, I mean, Zoe is the marketing guy with all his gear on, if you can't see him. Uh, right? I mean, you got the, he's even at 10 a.m. in the morning on doing a podcast. He's got the backdrop, you know, the behind him, the step and repeat the whole deal. <laughs> So I'm kind of helping you out. If you're only listening, you know, you shouldn't be only listening. You should be watching. What do you got for me? So, Gee, I, I, I knew I knew what type of show I was coming on. You know, I just wanted to make sure I was prepared the right way. You know what I mean? I love yeah. it. So I wanted to give it, make sure we had the right look for, for your platform. I love That's it. All. You we get one <laughs> shot, one shot, everything, right? Like everything's it's one shot. So do it. What are you going to, I don't know where Eminem's coming for, but I'm not going to throw away my shot, right? Wasn't that, I think that was Eminem and 8 Mile. Yeah, Eminem. Yep, yep, Eminem. Yep. And it's like, yo, like that's life, gang. You know, when you're in it, take the chance. I didn't, I was there repping a company that I don't own. That I was just helping them out doing some different, you know, brand ambassador stuff. I, you know, but I'm in that room and I'm I'm talking about again at, at Bowling for Peace. 
I meet all these great people that I didn't know, expanding my network. And as you know, Zoe, and certainly the people listening, Gary, I don't know if you know this yet, but I am the nonprofit sector connector. It's only one, baby. You know why? Because I made it up. So that's how come there's only one. Let's <laughs> let's let's get into it. So, so tell me, who are you? You know, who are you? What's your connection to the game? And then introduce Gary and let's have a conversation, man. Right. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I'm I'm definitely uh a, a, another another a replica of you as far as being a connector, conduit, that liaison. You oh. know, for folks, I, I realized that was kind of like my um. How, how should I say it? I, I guess my calling from young, because I've always been that way, even even as a teenager growing up, I realized no matter what conversations I had, I always like to I listen to people and my brain already just takes in. How could I help that person? You know what I'm saying? Because with resources that I know and I, I'm always quick to say, oh, you know, I got somebody that can help you with this. You know what I mean? And just automatically connect, you know, connecting them like back, you know, you don't think about money, you know, I'm not money driven or anything like that. You know, you just genuinely want to help, you know, because you have the resources. And that's what I come to realize today that all of the resources and relationships that I've built up over the years is not for me. You know what I'm saying? They're definitely not for me. You know, it, I realize now it, it was all for me to be able to pour into the type of person I am to pour that into the communities and people who need that help. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't have a problem with doing it. I've never been money driven, but you know, I, I was born and raised in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. You know, came up over there. Um, had some trials, some 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 tough times in the household. You know, things we had to overcome living, you know, below the poverty level and things like that, or at the poverty level. Um, coming up in, in Crown Heights. And, um, you know, I went to Prospect Heights High School. Well, well, first I went to elementary school at 316, PS 316. Then, my, then, then I went to Jackie Robinson right there with a legendary Ebbets Field was, wow. was, was made. Wow. You know, so I, I went to I, IS 320 Jackie Robinson. And then I went to um, one of the worst schools in the country, Prospect Heights. You know, this is where I started not taking school seriously um and didn't know the, the the real repercussions of that the consequences of that right so i went to prospect heights i didn't start playing basketball until i was 15 and um i played football first that was my first love but then i was i, re I realized how much of a wuss i was because I, the coal it, it, the coal is was the reason why i stopped playing football you know so i played one year of football you know uh, won the championship thank god i had something to prove that i really played you know and then um till nice. grade Nice and warm in the gym, man. We can play outside yeah, yeah, when it's yeah, outside yeah, yeah. weather, but we can get inside yeah. the gym. Not always. You can't always get in the gym, but when you can, it's nice and playing out. Listen, man, I, I I hate being cold. I don't know where, like, I say this all the time. Like, I, I know where my parents, parents, parents kind of were from, but wherever my people are from, it had to be warm because I'm a baby, bro, when it comes to a cold out. I just freaking hate being cold, man. It's, Not so you're So it became basketball. Yeah, it became basketball. I was born in the summer too, so I, I use that a lot. You know, I'm born in the summer. I was born in warm, in warm weather. So, so, um, so, but uh, so I went from there, you know, and um, I, I played at Prospect Heights. You know, I I couldn't even uh, dribble when I was there. You know, I just rebounded and put back the you know the offense rebounds and ball and stuff. And then I then I um just started improving. You know, through high school I, I, to the point where I got the MIP award, which is something that. A lot of people don't really like, you know, being most improved. But um, and then, you know, my senior by my senior year, um, I was able to get to play in the garden in the in the playoff round. Um, that was a blessing. And then I and then I became like I, I got on the all borough team. Um, I made the all borough team in New York, and I was averaging twenty five points, ten rebounds, five assists, and four steals for wow. the school. You know, and I, I got the uh, the eyes of the Gauchos, a great AAU organization. Shout out to the Gauchos organization. Um, I was fortunate to be playing with with some great teammates. I'll shout them out. The Stefan Marbury Gar, Sham Gar, Felipe Lopez, um, Hishimu Evans, you know, all of these great guys. And because I was the one who didn't take high school serious, which is always the message, you know, I was a class clown, didn't really do much in there. Um, I, to be honest with you, I was never interested and a lot of the schoolwork because I knew it wasn't stuff that I was going to use in my real in my, in my in the real world after school. I've always been entrepreneurial minded since 10th grade. I knew I didn't want to work for nobody. You know why? Because I didn't want to be part of the 40, 40, 40 plan, which is, well, first of all, I say that the school, I know that the school systems, as we know, is designed for us to be employees and not employers. You know, we don't get taught that option of entrepreneurship. So 
for me, the 40, 40, 40 plan that I didn't want to be a part of in society was working 40 hours a week for 40 years, uh, for, for, for 40, for working 40 years for 40 hours a week to live off of 40% of what you couldn't live off of when you had all 100% of it. Oh, so you remember, you remember the show Family Feud and like somebody would say like, you know, survey says and it go, Arr. right. But I was hearing you say, oh, it was like, Arr. like a big X on it because they, we are hoodwinked, man. We're tricked into that whole thing that like, that's the, what we're supposed to do, man. Because, you know, uh, listen, I'm breaking up, man. They're going to come get me today. This might be it. You may never see your boy ever again, gang. Going to get me because we're, we're telling the truth today on the show. And that's <laughs> what it like. We, you know, we don't, we, they, not everybody wants us to be informed. Not everybody wants us to be aware because, you know, they they need us the system the, the consumerism the capitalism need you as a cog in the wheel anyway i'm going to rant on that i want to get gary into the conversation because we got to take a quick break and we're going to come gary what just give me a minute or two and then we'll come, come right back to you when we get back your, your quick background uh okay um well my name is gary forbes um i was born in Colón, panama um and moved over to brooklyn new york when i was four years old uh and I, my actually, what's crazy is about the cold. The first time I, I landed in Brooklyn, it was I landed in JFK. It was like February at the time, and if you know anything about Panama, it's, it's about hundred degrees every day. It's uh, we only have rainy season and warm season pretty much all all year long. So my first day landing in JFK, I was like, man, I want to go back home. Man, it was snowing. It was like freezing cold but what's crazy is i actually do love the cold weather i'm not i'm i've, I've transformed i'm not really a summer guy because you can you can get dressed in the cold you can dress for the warm doesn't matter how many clothes you take off yeah you're is. still gonna be you know, you're still gonna be, be sweat you guys still gonna be sweat i get that man i get it but i would tell you this if i had a choice I'm, i don't know much about panama but if i had a choice san diego is perfect bro it's like breezy and like 70 80 all year round and, you know, but it, the thing is, I live on Long Island, man. That's the other side of the planet as far as we're concerned, right? I want, when we come back, I want Gary to continue talking, but I do have to get to a quick commercial break. It's part of the show. We'll go to the break right back. Gary Forbes, my guy, CEO Zoe, on my show. That rhymes. We'll be right back. Tommy D. Are you a conscious co creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you a high-achieving, growth-oriented leader? Are you interested in developing your authentic leadership while creating a healthy, inclusive workplace? Hi, I'm Dr. Mira Bronku, host of The Hard Skills on talkradio.nyc at 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays, where we discuss how leaders develop the hard skills needed to make a greater impact. We interview experts, have live coaching, and tackle these challenges. Listen to The Hard Skills on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy, and I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. The only song in the history of songs about a man in an attic. Doing a show about nonprofits. 
and there's probably more, but I think it's the only song ever in the history that talks about a radio show from an attic, but I don't know. Google it, man. Google it if you don't believe me. All right, got to make some shout outs real quick because I got a guy called Logan that helps me out. He does the production work behind the scenes. And Gary Forbes and Zoe were I just talking about. Zoe and I are obviously wimps. We don't want to be outside when it's cold out. Gary Forbes digs the cold weather. My friend Logan kind of shouts out and he says, this is my personal motto. You can always wear more layers. So I guess he's talking, it's all right being cold. You can always wear more layers, but you can only get so naked before the cops get involved. <laughs> I, I, I guess words to live by, man. I don't know. I'm I'm curious. <laughs> Logan, maybe we should do a whole show about that comment and that quote. Uh, it's very interesting for me. All right, but I had to put it out there because Logan does an incredible job for him behind the scenes. And uh, with that quote, I had to give him some love. All right, so Gary, you get to JFK. You want to get back on the plane. You don't get back on the plane, so you, you go to Brooklyn. So what happens from there on out? Right, and so, uh, you know, basically I grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, all my... Uh, elementary school life, uh, high school life, and you know my first my first week, um, you know I watched uh, a game, a Chicago Bulls game. It was on uh, NBA on NBC. Um, I watched the Michael Jordan game. And I was like, man, I, I fell in love with the game of basketball. And what better place to be than you know the mecca of basketball, in New York. Um, you know, in Brooklyn, New York, um, you know, being around basketball, uh, you know, there were parks galore everywhere, every, every block, you know, I grew up in bed Brooklyn. So every block, you know, we almost had a park. We had 258 Park, Kingston Park, um, literally all around me. Um, so I fell in love with the game of basketball and, you know, my father, who's a very athletic person, my father was an Olympic lifter. He was a cyclist. Uh, he was a, a diver, a welder in the Panama Canal. And um, we actually, when I was about three years old, my father built us a basketball hoop with his bare hand. You know, he was a welder. He literally was a handyman, can pretty much make anything. Um, so, and I have it uh, posted in uh, one of my Instagram stories, um, you know, the hoop that he built us. And when I moved to Brooklyn, New York, you know, I'm getting older and I'm, you know, getting friends around the neighborhood. And I, I asked my father, can, you know, can he bring that, you know, that hoop? It was a regulation hoop. Um, and, you know, he brought it over. And I, Wait, I just he, brought remember, it he brought it over. He built that when you were in Panama and he brought the hoop to the States. <laughs> <laughs> took it apart. The, 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 you know, the steel, the, the, the rim part, took it off the backboard. Suitcase, shipped it over, and you know he put it back together when he was here, and yeah. So you know those little things obviously were were little was water to the you know to the to, to the seed of wanting to be a basketball player, and you know I remember I was in the second grade, and the teachers usually give out the you know what do you want to be when you grow up, um, you know kind of assignment to the kids. You know, everybody's raising their hand, doctor, lawyer, you know, nurse, uh, police officer, firefighter, you know, the typical thing that, you know, kids see you in the, in the, um, you know, career days and things like right. that, that the uh, school system, uh, you know, usually does. And I was the only one in the class that said that, you know, I want to, you know, be an NBA player. I want to be a basketball player. And I remember the teacher's name. Um, you know, I always say this. You know, speech whenever I do any kind of uh you know talks or any um any uh, you know, um, kind of discussion about myself when I talk about you know believing in yourself and things like that. Um, I remember her name, Miss Walcott. Uh, she said, you know, Gary, you got to be you know a little bit more realistic. And you know, I kind of I understand you know from boo, uh, boo Miss Walcott, boo 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 Miss Walcott. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Time out. Thirty second time out. Tommy D's calling timeout. Sorry. Yo, the people are not reasonable. People who are successful are unreasonable and unrealistic. That's why we're successful. Sorry, Mr. Forbes. How to interrupt. I'm sure she's a lovely woman or was a lovely woman, but but we don't agree with that. So <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. I'm telling you, I mean, I feel bad that I'm calling her out like that, but but like we can't be realistic, man. You want to be realistic, then you can be regular. You know, I I Gary, tell me if I'm wrong. No, but I, I, as I got older, I kind of understood what 
you know, from her, you know, viewpoint, what she saw, like, you know, we didn't, there was no NBA players in the neighborhood, you know, that was something, which is something with that seemed to her was very distant. Yeah. Um, you know, I went home that day, you know, luckily for me, I have a, um, a optimistic mindset. I've always been like that, you know, shout out to my father, my late father, uh, who always just put that, you know, just belief in yourself, no matter what it, what it was, it was just an optimistic, you know, mindset. So, you know, went home, had the vision, like, all right, cool. You know, that's, you know, somebody who doesn't believe in me, that's almost kind of gives me like energy to prove out. Not necessarily wrong, but myself right, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, went, went to high school, um, had a great uh, junior high school and high school, um, you know, experience going to Benjamin Banneker in Brooklyn, New York. It was a specialized school. You had to take a test to kind of get in there. Um, you know, I could I could have went to Boys and Girls High School, which was literally right across the street from my from where I grew up at. But I went to the school, um, and I and I look back, and I'm doing stuff with education now and the school system now, and I see that you know at the time I could have went to ben, uh, to Boys and Girls High School that had four thousand kids. Uh, Versus where I went to Benjamin Banneker High School, we had a total of 350 kids. Really? So there was more, you know, yeah, there was more teacher to student, you know, connection. You know, I, I used to remember after school sometimes, you know, I'm sitting there talking with teachers. We had, I still, there's, there's still some uh, teachers that I have their phone numbers that I speak to. So there was that good connection um, of, you know, just growing up. So I have a, a very different viewpoint when it comes to my own experience of high school. And I do see the difference in, you know, the, how, you know, education is ran. But yeah. that was a, you know, very, very uh, good experience. And, um, you know, fell in love with the game of basketball. And... Did you play? I want to hit me with the punch. Did you make it to the NBA? Yes, I did. All right, so tell, tell us about that, and I want to get Joe back into this because I want to know how you guys are connecting and collaborating, but where did you play? How long did you play? I uh, played three years in the NBA, played for the Denver Nuggets, Toronto Raptors, uh, Houston Rockets, uh, a little bit of the Brooklyn Nets before um, injuries and a um, couple other things uh, took part in, um, you know, my career um, ending in the NBA. Played overseas for eight years, played in different countries. Italy, Israel, China, Vietnam, Puerto Rico, played in my home country in Panama. Did you play in Panama? You did? Oh, man, that had to be a thrill. See, the thing about this this program that I, we do here, it's, it's, I realize that as it's happening, like we never have enough time to expand on all the storylines. So I think what we can always do is, as long as we're still walking around this planet, gang, we can always do another show. We can get into just Gary Forbes on the Gary Forbes story and how it's motivational and the whole thing, right? So, uh, so... So I want to go back to you real quick because we're going to bounce back and forth. So, right, right. you know, I mean, tell me why you founded your organization, the Combine. Tell us what it is before we go to a break. All right. Yeah, real quick. I, I started my my Combine because I saw and found a, a, a void in in uh, in the marketplace for what I've created, which I, I actually asked a former friend of mine who worked with the, the 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 company who does the MBA combine. And I asked him, is does this form and level of testing exist on a grassroots level? Um, and he said, not that he knows, you know, he don't think so. And then that's where my light bulb went off. Boom. I knew I, I knew with my resources and relationships globally um, that I can make this happen. And also, you know, the head I have on my shoulders, you know, so um, I, I, I birthed T3I Sports, um, which is an ecosystem for us to be able to benchmark and um, all of our middle school and high school kids via data and analytic tracking for their player share group profiles for better recruitment and scouting advantages. So now these co college coaches, NBA scouts, or high school coaches can now have access to the data for uh, of our of our kids from middle school and high school now for you know um, from an athletic measurement standpoint, which doesn't involve include talent at all. So I, I'll leave I'll leave it there because I'm going to come back to it. Yeah, we're going to yeah. do a break, but we're going to come back to it because. But I mean, I, I want before we go to break, one last question. Where did your career go? I mean, because you played, uh, I kind of cut you off a little bit there too. Where'd you go? And and yeah, so 
So yeah. from 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 high school, I went. I played. I went to Ju JUCO. I wasn't able to go D one. I had every D one letter I could get I, I offered, but I couldn't go because, like I said, I was a clown clown in school. I didn't take it serious. So from there, I was able to go to college and study something that I wanted, which was marketing and advertising, business administration. What I can use in the real world is which where I am now, and it is very useful. So I went to uh, Sullivan County Community College where we won a national championship. I was the MVP of the region there. My very first game, I broke the scoring record with 36 points off the bench. I had to throw that in there. You know, I shot 14 for 19. Those games, those games aren't even that long. They're like, yeah. what do you got, like 40 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> like... What do you mean? Is I entered the game, I think three or six minutes in on both halves. So I was I was hungry to play. They have a big article in the paper that I have still about about that. I was I, I became eligible that day. So um it, it was dependent on my Civil War history exam. Well, you, yeah. oh my God, that's a whole other story, but a civil war yeah, hit. Yeah. Oh my God. All right, look, I knew we're never going to have, we're never going to get through the whole show. But the, that to me, though, you knew you, so that's it, gang. There's a man, a young man at the time, that there's an opportunity in front of him, right? He's coming off the bench. He just got eligible because of this exam. I'm going to ask him later if we got time. I'll text you about civil war later on. But like, <laughs> like, if there's an opportunity right in front of your face, what are you going to do? It's right there. You're gonna you're gonna look after it, or you just it's gonna let it go away and let somebody else take it, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about, CEO Zo, right? I mean, that that's it. So you play you go, solving, win the championship, thirty six points off the bench, the whole thing. What I, what's the highest level you you got so, to in the game? Yeah, actually, from there, I actually went straight and uh, went to Paris. You know, um, to France. You know, I had an opportunity to play in in Switzerland for a second in Geneva. And uh, then down in Venezuela, in uh, Caracas, so uh, Co uh, Cocodrilos, you know, I would learn my little bit of Spanish down there. You have to, because they don't speak no English. And then <laughs> on the side, but like, you can't be mad at the ladies that's there, you know what I'm saying? Um, I learned, I, I learned I Spanish in, in two days. They all knew <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother show, gang. We'll get to that on a different episode or something like that. But the flip no, side to that, yeah. The flip side to that is the the message is you know about staying focused and leave those distractions alone. You know what I'm saying? And just to get to the goals and what you're trying to be, what you're really, really meant yeah. to be there for. You know, well, and there's that. a lot of distraction, and it's not just about the females. It's there's a lot of things. There's the flash. There's the party. There's the drink. There's the this right. Like there's a lot of things. That right. yo, talent is not the only thing. You, you need discipline, you know. And in a lot of cases, I mean, look, we nothing's more cliche than the athlete who gets a big, big contract and 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 now that you know the money's gone and and now he, he doesn't have it or she doesn't have it. I mean, that we hear that all the time, and that's just simply a matter of life is tempting, man. There's a lot of temptations, and it's difficult to to stay on track. And there's a lot more to that conversation. But all right, when we come back, let's talk about how did you guys. Right, like become friends, become connected, become colleagues, and what are we doing together? I got to hear about Soul Survivors. Got to know what that is from the nonprofit perspective, and I want to obviously talk about Jan twenty seventh, which is uh, is just next week. So uh, I tell you, my friend, you look pretty well rested for a guy who didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, CEO. So, but uh, <laughs> you look good, bro. You look good. Hey, just so, Tommy, I got to I got to You're a marketing gotta... genius. You couldn't look any. You couldn't look any other way than that, right? No, man. <laughs> I'm going to share a couple of websites while we're at the break right now. Let's go to a break, Logan. And Logan, give me some more quotes so we can keep shouting you out. We'll be right back, gang. Tommy D. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector, coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. What really drives success in business? Introducing Intangify, the show that explores the intangible assets that create value and growth. I'm Matthew Asnell, your host and an attorney focused on innovation. Join me Fridays at noon Eastern to discover how innovation, culture, and other intangibles shape driving companies from startups to established businesses. We'll share strategies to unleash your business's true potential. Tune in live on talkradio.nyc Fridays at noon Eastern and intangify your business today. Were you an essential worker during the pandemic? If you needed to learn stages of epilepsy, did you depend on advocates? 
Did you use new innovations to cope with mental and neurological issues? Maintaining high quality of life and keeping good mental health are what we all strive for. I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each week, top healthcare influencers, professionals, and innovators answer these questions and more. Stay tuned on Thursdays at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will continue to be frank about health with all of you. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. That's right, man. Cut through the static. Join me in the attic every single Friday for only for the rest of my life. So that's another 50 years of this show. Um, eventually, I do the show every morning because it makes me super happy to do this show. I get fired up. What better way to get fired up than talk to leaders in the nonprofit sector and leaders in the business sector who are collaborating with leaders in the nonprofit sector? I'm sharing this website, Gary Forbes, the thesoulsurvivors.com. I mean, look, man, it's like cartoon and characters and what, what's up, man? What, what, tell me, what is this organization about, man? What, what are we doing here? Is a comic book? What, just tell me, man, fire away. The website again, gang, the soul, S-O-L-E, survivors.com. Tell me, Gary. Uh, soul Survivors is my comic book series. It's actually a platform um, about children with chronic health conditions like myself. I'm a type one diabetic. I'm one of three players in the NBA history to play in the NBA with type one diabetes. Um, you know, as it is, it's only like 4,500 players that, that have ever played in the NBA in its existence. And to be one of three to play wow. in the NBA health condition as serious as uh, type one diabetes. But um, towards the end of my career, I wanted to figure out, I was like, all right, what am I gonna do? What's my purpose um, here on, you know, on this earth? And, you know, what am I here to give back? And I thought about just my mindset, how I, you know, look at, you know, having, managing uh, type 1 diabetes. Uh, you know, I don't really look at it as, uh, and uh, it's crazy how I look at it. I have just this crazy mindset. I don't really look at it as, you know, an illness. It's it's something that, it is a challenge. It's something that you can, you can live and do and excel with. Obviously, I'm a proven and a living testament. So, um, you know, I looked at my career where I, I played at all the different places I've been to. And, you know, I thought that diabetes wasn't just enough. Um, yeah, I could have told the story about myself and, um, you know, all the trials with diabetes, but there's so many ch child health challenges that are out there. Um, there's, you know, autism, there's, you know, leukemia, lymphoma, uh, Crohn's disease. So um, I thought about, you know, my life, I was always into comic books. I was always into, um, you know, TV, you know, TV shows. So I thought I was thinking one day, I was like, all right, what's my purpose here? What, what am I here to give back? And I just thought of, you know, I just, I was just thinking one night, you know, why not create the first, the first idea was actually socks uh, for diabetics. Um, you know, the, I've been in the hospital before I've been, you know, um, with some, uh, some some diabetic uh, complications um and i thought you know you know the hospital socks the safety socks are... yeah yeah but what do you like do you need compression socks you're saying or or no just better socks when you're in the hospital uh, well when the so like i was thinking about uh, i was like all right diabetics you know we're we're not we're susceptible to you know uh you know certain you know foot you know diseases and things like that my father's foot was amputated my grandfather's foot was amputated so i was thinking i was like Hospital socks, they had the little sticky things, you know, that would be cool to make some, you know, cool cartoon socks, um, you know, for diabetics. Um, but, I, you know, I thought that wasn't enough. And, you know, I created a comic book series of superheroes, um, you know, children with health challenges, kind of like, it's like a mix between, it's like a real life X-Men, you know, X-Men were mutants. So, you know, these are, you know, real life superheroes who have these, you know, real life challenges. And I always thought that it was... It's kind of ignorant in the sense that we all are direct, indirectly and directly um, connected to someone with one of these health challenges that I'm going to, um, you know, highlight in the comic series. Um, you know, we do know somebody with autism or diabetes, type one, type two. We know somebody with some form of cancer, and 
Um, these are just the beginning of superheroes. I have um, a, a, a plethora of comic book series on the way. Uh, volume three is set to come out in March uh, about the two characters with uh, diabetes. And, you know, we keep rolling from there. I've written, I've written so far 16 volumes, um, three, two are published. Um, the goal is, you know, maybe 46 and maybe some of these characters can have their own spinoff. Um, I want to do a, you know, a, a, a merchandise, um, you know, avenue with this, uh, with this uh, platform, you know, toys and connections with hospitals and schools. Uh, yeah, I'm obviously wearing the merchant. Uh, some See, of the merch yeah, right I now. know, man. You know, it looked like when you came on the show early today with that T-shirt on, I was like, oh, man, it looks like it's like Transformers or what's he wearing mm -hmm. right there? Like, I, you know, it's got that kind of. Again, I think I'm maybe a little older than you, Gary, but I feel like that's like an era. Like I think something like I'm I'm doing some collaboration with a couple friends of mine, and I was like texting them, and I was like, yeah, yeah, you do this, you do that, you do this. We're like Voltron, and uh, like they were like they, these kids are like power, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers generation. They're like twenty years behind me. Some of these cats, and I was just like, I'm the old man. All right, I see it, man. I get it. I get it. I've been the old man in a lot of different rooms. I used to be the young man. They say like. Hey, Tommy D, you should run the young professionals part of our of our group. I go, I'm 46, man. I'm not really the young professional anymore. But Gary, what about what are you trying to I, I, like? First of all, the inclusion piece of what you're doing here is is unbelievable, man. I sit on the board of an organization called Spirit of Huntington Art Center. I would love for you to come for a visit. They've done comic book classes. They serve the population with intellectual developmental disabilities. In fact, I own an insurance agency and they rebranded our agency, Vanguard Benefits, which is a benefits, uh, employee benefits agency. And they did our entire rebrand. So, uh, and all the individuals that work there have intellectual developmental disabilities. So, you know, it's just so special what you're doing. I want to be, I mean, like I said, we could spend hours and hours upon all these different conversations. Gary, what it, there's a nonprofit angle to this, right? There's a nonprofit component to that. Give me that before we go to break. All right, so um, when I was in the MBA, you know, I started the Gary Force Foundation. Um, it was a just a it was a mission to raise awareness of the di you know of the diabetes community and uh, to raise uh, awareness of the diabetes um, and the challenges and you know to empower those people that are managing the, those conditions. And it was always to to foster an optimistic and genuine approach to health and wellness and just the education um, to, you know, to reaching out to the world and, and showing that, you know, myself, I was kind of, like I said, I was a living testament of, you know, all those challenges of, um, you know, living and managing diabetes and doing something that was, you know, kind of rare in a sense. Um, so that's, you know, where I created that. And, I remember my first uh, one of my first events. I had a strikeout diabetes event at Prospect Park, and a parent brought her child to the event, and she came up to me and she was like, "You know, thank you so much for you know just being who you are and you know doing what you're doing." And because my child, he's in the second grade, and he wanted to go out to try out for the basketball team, and his dad, who knows obviously he has diabetes, he told them that. Yeah, you know, you can't, you know, try out for the basketball team. You have diabetes, which is kind of like obviously a misconception. Right. But and again, I mean, the dad's looking out, right? He's just thinking maybe the kid, but, but right. Then you are able to counteract that as there's a guy playing in the NBA. Well, luckily, his friend was in the car with him and he was like, Gary Forbes has type 1 diabetes and he plays in the NBA. So that kind of was my first, like, okay. And kind of light bulb went on my head. I was like, all right, I, I'm, I'm kind of, here to impact and empower, inspire. And, you know, I, I, at the time, I didn't know how big the, you know, my impact could be, but I know now with, you know, through Soul Survivors and the comic book series that I created and uh, not even a series, like I said, it was a comic book platform to, like you said, a inclusion and connection. Um, the end goal for uh, Soul Survivors is a theme park. Um, I, I'm, I see that maybe 10 years down the line. Dude, I got chills. You know, you I don't know. I don't know about you or anybody listening, but I got chills, man. Well, like I, I'm going to, I feel like I'm ready. I'm going to be there. Whenever that is, I want to be at the gate going, yeah, Yo, you were on my show and you were talking about this thing. Now it happened, man. That's it. Why not? Why not, man? Why? It, right. You said something here in the chat. I want to read it out here because I think it goes in right in line with what you're saying. Doubt your doubts. 
before you doubt your faith. Yo, just because an idea pops into your head doesn't mean it's legit, doesn't mean it's real. You can just blow it out. We got like 60,000 thoughts every day, I think. And statistically, don't quote me because I'm no statistician, but I think it's like 95% of those 60,000 thoughts are negative ones. So that means I never curse on the show, but that means those are shitty thoughts. Blow them out. Think about, let's get rid of those. Why don't you, why don't we doubt that nonsense before we doubt what we can do? You know, like that's, ah, Gary. So what a great show this has been already. Let's see. Here's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, we got to take another break. When we come back, it's going to be the lightning round because I I want I want to hear T3I, the upcoming event, January 27th. How I think, Gary, you're going to be at that event? Yeah. Okay. So, so I want to hear about some of that collab we're going to do. And then, uh, you know, so we talked about it when I'm out there on site on the 27th. I don't know if we're going to do a podcast, but I'm sure we could do some video interviews and cool stuff that day. So when we come back, I want to know what's coming up for the, the event on Jan 27th and then what's coming up for the Gary Forbes Foundation, what's coming up for Soul Survivors, how we can help. We will be right but, back. One yeah. second, G. Yeah, before but, we go. But for that segment, real quick, I know you're on time. Make sure... Make, I, I, see, if y'all wouldn't be right if y'all didn't have the copy. You know what I'm saying? You got to have the copy. You got you, the copy. Of copy. course you do. Gary, because you're, you're a this marketing how we gonna guy. This close out that segment. You know, we got to close that segment out. So close that. it out. That's right. So if you're only listening right now and you're not watching, my guy Zoe is holding up one of the comic books right now. Yo, he's a marketeer. Gary, pay attention to what he's doing here, man. He's going, you know, look at this. I mean, you showed up with the shirt. It's good. But this guy's like, yo, look at the comic book. Look at it. I'm looking at it. You keep it. I'm supposed to go to a break already, Zoe. You're, you're getting me in trouble. I'm going to get fired. Look at that. I love it. I love it. We got everything. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go to a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Are you a high-achieving, growth-oriented leader? Are you interested in developing your authentic leadership while creating a healthy, inclusive workplace? Hi. I'm Dr. Mira Bronku, host of The Hard Skills on talkradio.nyc at 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays, where we discuss how leaders develop the hard skills needed to make a greater impact. We interview experts, have live coaching, and tackle these challenges. Listen to The Hard Skills on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy, and I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. That's right. We started with a definition of resilience at the beginning of the show, and now my friends are dropping quotes in here in the chat room. So let's let's hit them real quick. You know, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. You know, we know that for a while. If you think you can. So think you can. It says you decide. Gary Forbes said that. Well, Gary Forbes put it in the chat. We know we've heard that one before, but it's true, man. You know, it's all about your vision. It's all about your mindset. I was just saying that the other day. You know, I, I drive my four kids to school every day. And I say in my, it says in my calendar, it says I get to drive my four kids to school today. Not that I got to, I get to. And I'm not perfect by far from it. But that's a different mindset I get to. It allows me to embrace that opportunity. Even when my two daughters are arguing in the car ride to the school, I'm still like, I get to do this, man. Not everybody has this opportunity. There are no greater powers than those of choice, imagination, and belief. This is really cool. This is so great. What a great. Thank you, Logan, for that one. That's beautiful. All right, let's get into it. This is the lightning round. So what's coming up on January 27th? How can people plug in? And here's the other thing that I was thinking about selfishly. I never do selfish stuff on the show. It's kind of selfish. My son is 12, about to be 13. One of my sons. 
And this guy, he's a baller. And I want to get, I want him to toughen up. I want him to get a little tougher and stuff. So I want to get him out to some of the things you got going on. I want him to come out and see Haran. I want him to come out and see Gary. Gary's playing, whatever. Whatever's going on, I want to get him involved with. So we'll talk about that. But tell us how people can get involved with what's going on January 27th. Set it up again, please, if you could. What? Give me like three minutes on the whole thing up to January 27th. Set it up. What's going on? What are you actually going to do for people? Take that away for me. Right. So um what's going on? We we'll go right into that part first. Um January twenty seventh at Uncommon Charter, 1485 Pacific Street is where we'll be doing our our first as far as an empowerment piece for in, in New York and in Brooklyn of our Grind and Shine Athlete Empowerment Summit 2024. So we we'll, we'll be empowering, inspiring, and motivating our young scholars, obviously, to be better versions of themselves and to give them options on 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 being a, a better a best I, I won't I won't always use better because some you know we could always be better but finding that better self within yourself so to speak you know what I mean and um sharing the options in life at an early age because I didn't have that and this is why I want to be, be able to give that at that age because I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship or having that option as a younger as as a youth pretty much period so i want to be able to bring all of those resources and expose this to them at an early age so now they can have those options because that we know at the majors most of us really don't know these options even exist or being able to have the access or resources and, and, and relationships like mentors and people like ourselves to be able to be in their ear to give them some some good options and advice right so that's why i created um uh the, the empowerment piece plus i'm always we have been big on youth empowerment women equality and women in empowerment which i've done a lot of women empowerment conferences um because the women equality situation is terrible which to the point where they don't even have a combine for women which is like unreal at um, any level you're saying at any age group nothing okay any age tell me what group. Let, let's break it down for a sec because i don't know that everybody can relate to what the combine is so can you because some people yeah. are not in the game you know yeah, so the, the combine is is is, uh, is as athletic measurement testing. So we test we with four stations. We have our three quarter court sprint. We use the smart speed valve equipment, which is the highest form and level of accuracy timing gauge you can use, which is actually what the NBA NFL uses. So we have our three quarter court sprint, our four way lane agility, our, our um. Uh, our vertical, which is your 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 high, your, you know your your leaping, your one step vert, your your running vert, and uh and our reactive pro agility drills, also known as the shuttle run. So we we just test with with you know those four stations, and then those 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 results are actually there real time, and then we create the data for you guys post the event and everything like that. So so that's so what's that's, what if I get that data? Let's just say you, this is for middle school kids you're talking about, and 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 right or school, high school is for all all ages, but right. our target audience is middle school, high school. Because that was a, that was you saw that as an area of opportunity that was not being served, right? Exactly. Got it. So if I if I got my son playing and he goes out and he gets this he gets this data now now he can use that back to Mister Marketeer over here he can use that to market himself right into the game and different things like that right I mean right. It, you know that's part of it man that's like. You know, I I, talk, I know a little bit about building a brand. I I actually say, you know, I think it was uh was it Jay Z that said um, I'm not a business man. I'm a business man. Remember that? Yeah, right. And I'm like right on. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I love I I love that. I remember that forever. So so, but that's what it is, man. It's building. And if you're a player, you're still a brand. You're still you know right. there's a lot to that even at a young age, right? Right. Yeah. You definitely always want to be a brand. I love brand. I was always into branding and marketing everything you do. You know, you want to be a staple and a walking billboard for yourself and just representative of yourself everywhere because it's a brainwash. Right. The more they see whatever it is, you want the people to just say, wow, I've seen that somewhere before. You know, and that that's that's all it takes to open a conversation. I've yeah. opened up my laptop and everything. I got stickers everywhere. People in the airport see all the branding and it yeah. just looks bigger than life. Like they, they yeah, just. Yeah curious now well, i want to know i want to know man like i remember you and i had like a 10 minute conversation about your logo because you know it's reminiscent of the nba logo but it's the guy's right. not even doing the same move it's none of that right and but still i know because i know that rectangle so my brain is telling me nba that's basketball what's he do and like if i saw you at jfk we're walking past each other i might go what's up with that man what do you got right. like, what is that right like i wear a t-shirt that has a drawing of me on it it's got like that guy that, that if, you know if anybody knows the tommy <laughs> d caricature actually gary are you an artist do you do the artwork or do you do the writing because i mean i'm looking i want to hear about that too real quick yeah i, I do all the writing but not the artwork i'm not i'm not that great at the artwork but uh, yeah i have a 
<laughs> it eventually came up. Actors, um, yeah, my tattoo artist, and then I got to uh, actually uh, outsource somebody to, you know, animate these. And, you know, hopefully uh, the, the plan is a, a TV show, cartoon coming soon. So I love it. I love why. Yo, why not? That's the point. Why not? Just friggin' do this stuff. Gang, do it. The world is your oyster, as they say. Go after it. Get it. Make it happen. And if it doesn't work, make it happen a different way. That's what it is. All right. So we are way out of time. I knew that was going to happen a while ago. So like when we started. So uh, Gary, what can we do to help you out? Is just shout shout us out real. Give me 15, 30 seconds and then we'll go uh, right back to zone and then we'll take it home. Um, this, uh, you know, obviously the, you follow the, uh, Instagram at the soul survivors, uh, um, obviously the website this at the, I mean, the soul survivors.com. Um, uh, I'm obviously would love everyone to purchase and, uh, the volume one and volume two copies. The plan is to be a, a New York times bestseller. So obviously I need, I need the public to help out, but, um, you know, this goes to just the overall support and inclusion of children in our you know communities everywhere the world the the entire world is experiencing one of these health challenges and i'm going to continue to highlight ev every single uh childhood health challenge there is and you know give them a, a positive face because all these commercials that they show you know it's a very scary place the hospital is a very scary place and you know, I know from experience going through a, you know, a terminal health condition, um, you know, it is a, a very challenging and scary thing. So I want to be that light of hope, um, that light of, uh, you know, empowerment to, you know, help these kids and just to help the world kind of, uh, you know, understand and, you know, be more inclusive and understanding for everyone, you know, just. Uh, <laughs> That's my guy right there. What do we call it? That kid, he gets the, the mug for the day. No big deal. Just changing the world. That's <laughs> what I always say. No big deal. Just changing the world. You are changing the world, Gary Forbes. I am so appreciative to Zoe Lorenzo Hall, CEO Zoe for introducing us. Zoe, take us home before I take us home. What do you got? Yeah. So um, uh, first and foremost, I would I would I wouldn't be the, uh, a, 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 a super excited, proud dad if I didn't give a shout out to my son, who is Julian Hall, who is the second youngest MLS player in MLS history right now and has every team in, in Europe won him, you know? So Woo. shout out to my son, Julian, who's only 15 years old. He just gotcha. signed a shoe, wow. a shoe deal with Adidas. So really? 15? Yeah. Wow. 15. Who's who's repping him, huh? Huh, Zoe? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I, of course I am to, to <laughs> since birth, but um, he plays for the New York Red Bulls. Y'all follow Julian Hall. But wow. anyway... Yeah, yeah. So I want to. I want to always give my motivational quotes, you know. Um, and 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 I always like to go out by saying, you know, remember, successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. And where you are today is a result of the choices that you made in the past, and where you'll be tomorrow is a result of the choices that you make today. So we'll see you all at the top because the bottom is overcrowded. Peace, love, and blessings. But follow us at T3R Sports combine on ig all right and t3i combines on twitter all right you are you're on, you're on, I'm mute, on mute i'm on mute on my own show oh my yeah. god i'm shout fired out to up tommy though shout out to tommy first thank you, know, you. you know, gotta give the love back He's i got it do it and i, I appreciate it bro i'm doing the best i can with what i got man that's what it is and i'm just trying to get better today than i was yesterday i love that's this it. man this fires me up I, I I put myself on mute because I was going to interrupt you. And I was like, he's got it, baby. Let him go. So, look, Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connected to the show's philanthropy and focus on the Instagram for me, TommyD.NYC, TommyD.NYC. If you want to send me an email, TommyD at philanthropy in focus. And don't forget, P-H-O-C-U-S, just like we used to say fat. That's right. Back in the day, I'm a little – I'm a hip-hop guy. I love the music, but, but – and we used to say fat, and it had nothing to do with anybody being obese when we used to say it. But I also like alliteration, and that's the philanthropy and focus. Guys, make it a great day. I'm way overdue. Gary Forbes, Zoe, thank you, guys. Appreciate you both. Yeah, thank you. Take care, gang. Thank you. Thank you, T. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. Talk Radio NYC. Uplift. Educate.